Hello and welcome to another video in the Understanding Thermodynamics video series. My name is Adrian and in this video we will consider the concept of reversibility and entropy. But before we do that, let us first look at the bigger picture. We are at the point where we want to discuss entropy, which include ideal systems and real systems. We have already discussed energy conservation, which included closed systems and open systems. Now for closed systems, this typically included piston cylinder arrangements, which are also called control mass systems. And open systems, which is also called control volumes. We have also discussed the properties of substances, which include temperature, pressure and volume. If necessary, you can have a quick look at the previous videos to refresh your memory. Now let's have a look at the concept of reversibility. Consider a pendulum swinging in a vacuum. There is no friction at the pivot point. As the pendulum swings, potential energy, which is the maximum at the top, is converted into kinetic energy and the kinetic energy is converted to potential energy again. This is an example of mechanical reversible system. The process is reversed to its original condition without outside intervention. The pendulum will keep on swinging without outside action necessary to maintain its motion. Reversible systems cannot be realized in practice, but is a very powerful theoretical concept. Let us consider a reversible process in a piston cylinder arrangement. This is an adiabatic piston cylinder arrangement. There is no friction between the piston and the cylinder walls, and on top of the piston, there is a heap of sand. Right, so this is a thought experiment. Now assume we can remove the sand one grain at a time and suspend them at the same height in space without using any energy. The expansion therefore takes place slowly with the result that there is no pressure or temperature gradients in the gas. As work is done lifting the sand and pushing away the atmosphere, the temperature of the gas will drop. Now after removing all the sand, we begin to replace the sand one grain at a time. And when we are finished, the temperature and pressure will again be at the same values as it was in the beginning. Therefore, the gas has undergone a reversible process. Now, this brings us to the description of a re reversible process. A reversible process is one carried out in infinitesimally small steps. When the process is reversed or undone, both the system and surroundings remain unchanged. Here we can see ink injected into water and dispersing. This system can be seen as irreversible as it is the mixing of two dissimilar substances. The system cannot be brought back to its initial state without external influences. If you burst a balloon with air in it, a noise is heard due to the pressure gradient between the air in the balloon and the ambient air. That is why a reversible process takes place very slowly in very small steps to allow everything to be almost in equilibrium. We talk about a quasi equilibrium process which is in the state of equilibrium, there is no driving force for change and the system is stationary. Understanding reversibility, we can now explain the concept of entropy. Entropy gives an indication of disorder on a molecular level. At zero Kelvin, molecules have no kinetic energy and therefore does not move. As there is no disorder, the entropy of a perfect crystal at zero Kelvin is zero. As we add heat, the crystal will eventually melt and later vaporize. It is clear as we add heat that the entropy increases. This brings us to the definition of entropy. The symbol for entropy is S. In a reversible process, the change in entropy is equal to the amount of heat added divided by the temperature. Note that for a reversible process, there is no pressure gradients and therefore no turbulence. There is no temperature gradients. There is no friction and no mixing of dissimilar substances takes place. Now let us illustrate the calculation of entropy. Consider one kilogram of saturated liquid water in a frictionless piston being evaporated at constant pressure in a quasi-equilibrium process to a saturated vapor by the addition of heat. We can calculate the amount of heat using the first law. As this is a constant pressure process, the work done by the evaporating water can be calculated using the saturated pressure multiplied by the difference in specific volume. The heat necessary to evaporate the water is calculated to be 2,258 kilojoules per kilogram. 
the temperature of the evaporating water will remain constant at 99.61 degrees Celsius. Therefore, the definition of entropy becomes the change in entropy is equal to the heat added to the system divided by the saturation temperature. And we can calculate the change in entropy as 6.057 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So in summary, entropy is an indication of molecular disorder. Entropy increases with the addition of heat. For a reversible process, the change in entropy can be calculated as the change in entropy is equal to the heat added to the system divided by the temperature. Thank you very much for watching. The course notes, which these videos are based on, is available on my blog, audriansblog.com. I'm also on Twitter. If you want to connect with me and ask any questions, you're more than welcome to do so. See you in the next video. Bye.